Hi, Tammy. Thank you so much for being here. No, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So we've talked about this online, but I would love for the audience to get to know about the context in your journey and when you started to get serious about your wellness foundations. Yeah, for sure. So it really started um, when I was in college. So my freshman year of college that summer, I ended up unfortunately getting into like a, a car accident. And through that car accident, I ended up breaking my collarbone in my ankle and I had to be in a wheelchair for about like two months and a bunch of like rehabilitation from my muscle loss. And like throughout that experience, um, that summer, I was taking summer classes at like a community college. Um, and then I ended up having to drop those classes but what I learned was um, when I, after that, I had to drop those classes, I w- all I could do was really just lay in bed. There wasn't much <laughs> that I could do because it was hard to move and move around. It hurt a lot. Um, and from there, I think that's where I, I just ended up like sleeping a lot and trying to build my sleep routine. So then after that summer, when the fall semester started, my sophomore year of college, that's when I... Um, I would try to, you know, be really consistent with my sleeping schedule. And prior to that, my freshman year of college, I was doing way too much as well. I was so stressed, doing so many extracurriculars, trying to get good grades, like in order to get an internship, a job, whatever, and whatnot. I, you know, I was a, I'm a first generation college student. I come from a low income background. So I was like paying for my own school and that like that really stressed me out. So I was trying to do like everything I could do to like be like the typical like good student. (laughs) Um, So then after that sophomore year, I realized like I need to like cut down what I'm doing and and choose, figure out what my priorities are and like what I want to do. So I chose a couple extracurriculars that I thought were important to me, such as like Society of Women Engineers. um, And then from there, I cut down the classes I was doing as well and just did like like a typical like four or five um, and then balancing out the level of difficulty of those those classes. And then from there, I would I would do my best to just be consistent with my sleeping schedule. So I would like go to sleep at the same time, do a lot of morning classes and study throughout the day. And then from from there, I also built in um, going to the gym. So like from my car accident, I had like so much left muscle loss on the left side of my body. There are so many like imbalances that I did like physical therapy, but that didn't really um, help um, totally gain my muscle back. So then I ended up getting a trainer at the school I was at. So I was initially at Kennesaw State University for my first two years and I transferred to tech. Um, to Georgia Tech but through when I was there I found a trainer and he helped me um, gain back that muscle and build the basic foundations of strength training and that's kind of what am I, I implement in my everyday life now so overall I'd say that's like the short version of my whole like car accident story and how I built in a sleep routine and um, working out in my like everyday life. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with me and the broader audience. And that why is so important. And unfortunately, with sleep routines, it's something that is heavily contested in engineering schools or just high performance environments um, for undergraduates. And I'm sure folks are aware of their research that says that getting a certain amount of sleep is really beneficial to our learning and our well-being, but it's not done. And in fact, the culture sort of supports doing the opposite and comparing one's lack of sleep or all-nighters with one another. And so given this culture, given this environment that we were in, I'm curious about how you were able to navigate the social implications and the boundaries that come with saying, I'm going to bed now or to maintain what you had, because oftentimes students feel so grateful to have friends in their life that we or I definitely didn't go a step further to think 
are these friends who support and acknowledge the boundaries I had. In fact, I didn't have the boundaries. I would follow the status quo and I would go to sleep when my friends went to sleep. And what you've done is so remarkable and important. And so I'm curious if you could chat a little bit about maintaining and holding that boundary of the sleep routine in this college social context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know for sure. That's like a very good point. And that definitely does happen when you you are at like a school like Georgia Tech um, doing like an engineering degree. It can be like very hard to balance those things. So I would say you really want to find friends that I would say believe in things like that or like focus on things like that as as well. So for example, a lot of my friends, they weren't the type of person to go out and party. So I wasn't really out like super late going to clubs and things like that and like drinking. Um, a lot of my friends, like they would study with me in the mornings, throughout the days, like on the weekends. And that's just, I feel the culture that I built around me and like the what things that people, pe- pe- people, things people knew about me. Like they always knew like I was a morning person. I would like wake up at like 6 a.m. to go study and like thing, things like that. I love that. And what I'm picking up on advice for my younger self is that even if I enjoyed going to the parties or drinking, it was up to me to make sure I had built both cultures around me if I felt that both were important. But what I was doing was I was looking for one culture within the other. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm sure that existed but it was definitely harder. Like it would have been so much easier to have those two sets of humans who could support those different needs. And I think we learn while we're in college. And so I hope this gets to the right audience and the folks in college now can then implement that into their lives. Right. And yes. then like even, even when I was in college, I would have like different in this in a way, like different sets of friends. And that's kind of how it is as I've grown older too. Like I have friends that I will go out with at night or friends that I'll study with, friends that I meet with too for like career advice. So there's always I do have like different sets of friends for like different things that I like doing with that person. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. So what advice do you have for folks who have built a sleep routine that they're proud of in college, but now it's different at work and maybe they have to push their schedule up earlier. They have to really become a morning person. What advice do you have for those folks as a morning person yourself? (laughs) Yeah, sure. So I came up with a list of things that I try to do in my everyday life. Um, So the first one is really consistency is I'm going to sleep um at like the same time or around the same time like I'm usually in bed by like nine or ten and I realized if I go to bed way too early I'll I'll wake up at like a really weird time so I just try to go to bed like at nine or ten and then I'll usually wake up around like six or seven um and even like if I'm going to bed like later I still I'll still wake up at the same time in the morning um just to be consistent with that because like sometimes you just end up going to bed later because of whatever that's happening in your life um so I try to always wake up at the same time even on the weekends um because I know some people try to sleep in, sleep in on the weekends however um, I say to do your best to just um wake up at the same time be consistent with your um schedule and then, like now that I've built that up, I usually um, I'm able to just wake up before my my alarm. Um, and then I would say the second thing that I do is I try my best not to eat um, after six p.m. because um, I think it just helps my body um, to digest my food. And then I would say the third one is not using my phone like thirty minutes before bed. And I try to like either like meditate or like read during that like time period. I love that. And I'd love to dive a little bit deeper into that meditation or reading piece. I've also learned that art could be a good alternative to that mindfulness little wind down session in the evenings as well. But I'm curious about how you got into meditation, particularly for your night routine, because 
meditation in the morning has been something that's really anchored a lot of um my hardest days mm-hmm. but the night routine piece I think has been really challenging and what's so interesting is a good morning routine starts off with a good night routine the <laughs> day before so I'd love to chat about how you started your night routine meditations yeah I, I would say it probably started um when my car accident happened um throughout that period and I've just built it over time because when I when my car accident happened um I just had like so much time I guess to like sleep because I was like so I was so injured that it gave me a lot of time to think and I think thinking is where your best thoughts come and where you kind of learn what things you need to fix in your own life so like now um at night when I like meditate or just think I really I'm just thinking about oh what happened at like what things happened at work what things can I improve um what am I going to do tomorrow that's kind of like the series of steps that I go try to go through right so being intentional about the wins from the day reflecting on that and then setting yourself up for a one percent improvement for the next day so that you can take something you learned from today and implement it tomorrow right yeah exactly yes (laughs) I love that are there any um types of meditations you prefer are they guided are they with music are they in silence do you have um any sort of extra rituals like a meditation pillow or making sure your back is always aligned with the wall anything of that sort I would say usually I'm just laying in bed before I go to sleep oh I'm not doing anything it's usually in silence and I just let my thoughts run because I think that's also like a huge struggle when people meditate they think it's like um, people think it's like wrong for your thoughts to just run and like you just need to like think about nothing which isn't true um, right yeah <laughs> and then I would say in the morning that's what I do at night but in the morning before I go to work or like when I'm starting work and I'm in the office and like going through emails sometimes I'm just like listening to piano music while I like, go through my emails <laughs> I love that yeah and that can really help you feel centered and grounded and I've had many days where I simply haven't felt like I've had the time to go through my emails with the piano music. Mm -hmm. I am still very much in that era of being a fresh out of school new grad and still figuring out my routines. And all of this has been so helpful. And I definitely think the piano music or the jazz music or whatever is coming is such a great tip. Like, and you see the change when you actually do it. And I would like add to that, like I like go into the office a little bit earlier because it gives me that time to go through my emails before everyone starts working. Because like if you come in at like the nine o'clock, everything is already like happening and you're like just just getting distracted by whether it's like people like bugging you for things, messaging you or already emails that are coming in. So I try to like go in a little bit earlier to give me like whatever, like a like a 30 minutes, an hour before like everyone else comes in so I can like reset focus and um, you know figure out what I wanted to do that day right absolutely and I think that's been something that I've been implementing for myself as well like usually a 9 or 10 p.m uh night routine or just heading to bed helps me wake up by six and six to eight I get to really slowly start my day like do the skincare do the you know brushing of my teeth Mm -hmm. like take my vitamins but then having some extra time before my like 8 30 meetings is I feel so grateful for that time and it's really precious like you really need to protect it um so that you can get into the stuff with the right mindset because I can see the difference in my days like on some days I feel like I'm on this roller coaster just because I haven't set myself up for success at the start. And yeah, that advice is so important. I'm so grateful for it. Thank you. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) So if you're ready, I would love to ask you some rapid fire questions. And 
feel free to take a moment to answer if it doesn't come immediately. And if you're ready, I'd love to start with the first one. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Okay, so what does wellness mean to you? I would say that's a state where I feel happy with where I am and how I feel. So it's a combination of both my like mental health and um, physical like well-being. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) What does effective leadership mean to you? I would say that's important it's being a good like people leader which means like having someone there that's that will support you not blame you for things which I think can happen a lot um in in my job in the job that I'm in and then I would say someone that helps you grow and wants to see you grow and um is willing to be on that path with you I love that so like for the employee not against the employee right exactly didn't (laughs) need to be said or stated Mm -hmm. but it's important yes Um, all right so we've covered this but I essentially wanted to learn more about your morning and night routine but mostly what helps you bounce back if you ever fall off track like maybe if you're traveling or you're in a new space or something's off or something happened the night before or the morning of what helps you bounce back yeah, I'd say I try not to force myself to do it in a way. So, for example, like if you're like I, if I travel a lot, um, I'm like on different time zones, and then when I come back, it's like I'm like out of whack. So like then I I don't try to force myself to go to bed at the right necessarily the right time, but um over like a couple of weeks, I'll I'll like you know make it like thirty minutes. Like if I'm going to bed like really late, make it like thirty minutes like earlier every day, or like ten minutes or something like that. So slowly build it up and like, just don't, don't try to force it all out one time. I love that. Well, I love chatting with you about this. It's such an important topic. You have such precise and good advice on the things that have worked for you. And what's so helpful is the clarity with which you've stated it. So if things feel really challenging for students right now, cutting through that fluff can really help I hope they can start looking for the right community around them that honors their boundaries and they can keep to those night routine rules that you know help them end their day nicely and start the next day besides everything that you shared already is there anything else that you'd like to elaborate on or any other advice you'd like to give um, on this topic or stuff in this area No, I don't think so. I think we've covered it. No, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad. And I'll make sure the audience members know how to reach you or follow you or continue learning from you in the show notes. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no, of course. Thanks for having me. It was so much fun.